Listen to this. Can you hear this in the background? I'm just about to make a video and the, the head of the village comes on telling everybody about lockdown and you can hear in the background all the dogs barking as well in the background. So, village life. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that, that little interruption from the head of the village telling everybody in the village via the Tanai system that we possibly have two COVID in our village. So they're under investigation now, under getting the checks and we'll find out. And they've also imposed a sort of nighttime curfew from our village. Unless it's important, you're not allowed to travel around after seven o'clock on the evening. But hey ho, that, that's what they're trying to do to try to suppress the COVID here in Thailand and they've done it so for so long and they've been good at it and fingers crossed they'll they'll crush it again. So yeah, back to the DJI. I bought the DJI from the DJI store, DJI store 13 in Bangkok. Um, they said that they'd do all the paperwork for me with regard to registration and I thought, oh, okay. So I got cheap insurance with them and they said it could take up to 45 days to process all the paperwork and again as with paperwork in thailand that's where the nightmare sort of began so they wouldn't do everything by email we had to send the photographs of the drone the registration number of the drone the serial numbers everything by post and again that took three or four days for them to get it and they still didn't have all the information that they requested, so I had to send them some more information that they requested. And they submitted all the paperwork. They give me all the links to the Civil Aviation Authority so I could check the progress, because that takes the longest, about 30 days. And I could go onto their site and check the progress. So I did this a couple of times, and it says, um, request further information, request further information. So then I noticed the email address that they'd sent sent the request for further information to wasn't my email although he gave me the links to to go up i didn't know what extra information they required so i went through the editor editing facility on the caat website and <laughs> i noticed even though i sent all my details to the guy in the dgi store when he submitted the information to the caat i'm a british citizen i'm a british passport holder but according to the information he sent to the CAAT, I was Romanian. A Romanian, even though my passport is British, he submitted the information, even though he had all the paperwork and photocopies of my passport that I was a British citizen, he said that I was a Romanian citizen. And that's what the information that they were asking, because it was a conflict of information. My passport says British, but on the application form it says Romanian. So again, that just delayed it for another week until I called them up by phone and thankfully the, the person on the other end of the phone could speak pretty good English and we sorted all the information out. So now I've got all the paperwork to be able to fly my drone legally in Thailand. So I carry all your documentation with us just in case we get stopped by the police. And this is how silly it is for flying a, a small drone. You can be fined up to 40,000 to 100,000 baht for flying a small drone. But drive a motorbike without no tax test insurance or license, you get fined 500 baht. But that's Thailand. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to put a couple of pictures of flying my drone. Um, we went down to the beach the other day. So as you can see, the beach is empty. There was only me and Ploy, my wife, on the beach at the time. So virtually we had the whole beach to ourselves. But the DGI has its own problems because if it's how small it is and how quiet it is I was flying it flying it along the uh, coast and to get some shots of the water and the waves crashing against the sand and I was flying it quite low to be able to get them shots and at one point I just lost it I couldn't find it I couldn't see it and I couldn't hit the the return to home button because it was under some trees but I, I just couldn't see it and looking at the, the screen, 
because I was in the sunshine, you could hardly see it, so I had to walk into some shaded area, and even then in the shaded area, it was still difficult to see the picture on my iPhone. So for one one second there, I thought I'd lost it, and you'll see in the, in the picture I'm just gonna put up is how close it was to the sea. And my first real outing of it could have landed in the sea, but it didn't, thankfully it got it back. But for all of these videos that you see about the distance, you know, five, six, seven kilometers away, you can't see it after about five or 600 meters. And you certainly can't hear it. So if you're flying around in an area that you don't know and it isn't well above all the buildings, the chances are you could lose it or lose sight of it. And you know, you could lose your drone. So I would suggest anybody who's starting to learn to fly the drone, take it into big open areas. I'm still learning with it and I nearly learned an expensive lesson the other day when it was nearly going into the sea for a swim. So hopefully I'll get some better videos with the drone now that I can legally go out and fly it and I'm looking forward to it and it's a learning curve with me DJI drone. So 10 out of 10 for the DJI drone. It's a marvellous piece of kit and the quality of the video is better than the operator that uses it and that's me and hopefully as the time goes on you'll get some better videos of my life here in Thailand. So from Les, living the dream in Thailand, till the next video, bye for now.